Labor and leisure are the starting and end points of the American dream, which is built on the assumption that hard work leads to prosperity. Since jeans first became fashionable, they've zigzagged between extremes, revealing changing attitudes towards class, politics, status, and, of course, fashion. I'm Hamish Bowles, Vogue's global editor-at-large and the World of Interiors editor-in-chief. And I'm here to walk you through the history of denim from the gold rush to today. Here's everything you need to know about jeans. Over time, blue jeans have become a symbol of a laid-back American lifestyle. But they have international roots and take their name from Jeunesse Fostium, a durable fabric used for workwear in Genoa, and indigo-dyed fabric from De Nîmes, France. Around the time that technological advances led to the development of a transatlantic textile trade between England and the United States, the prototype for modern jeans was developed in the American West, spurred by miners hoping to strike it rich during the gold rush. Responding to a client's request for more durable work pants, a Reno-based tailor named Jacob Davis added rivets as reinforcement to sturdy cotton duck fabric. Needing backing, he turned to tradesman Levi Strauss, and together they applied for a patent, which was issued in 1873. Over time, that cotton duck ceded to more pliant denim. Denim's long history, which is intertwined with that of the American cotton trade, has often been edited and polished in a way that undervalues or omits the essential contributions of enslaved people in the development of this humble yet precious material. For that reason, no garment carries more symbolism, but also pain, than a pair of jeans. That jeans have a place in American myth-making is partly due to Hollywood. In the westerns that proliferated in the 1930s, denim became one expression of the fictitious hero's rugged individualism. Jeans' life in fashion dates to this decade, as these staples of workwear began to be worn for leisure by city folk who adapted their dude ranch denim for suburban life. In 1942, the American designer Claire McArdle created the popover utility dress for Townley. Made of denim, it came with a coordinating oven mitt, and it sold like hotcakes. Post-war, D-Mob GIs adapted uniform denim for everyday casual wear. But it was the so-called first generation of teenagers borrowing cues from the movies. Marlon Brando in On the Waterfront and James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause and music who made jeans synonymous with youth and rebellion. Hippies redirected this anti-establishment attitude, aligning jeans with solidarity, egalitarianism and individuality via patches and embroidery. Peace and political movements often intersected. Those toiling in the civil rights movement often wore denim, according to scholars, as a sign of solidarity with the clothing worn by black sharecroppers. Designer denim, carrying labels like Calvin Klein, Fiorucci and Gloria Vanderbilt, was an invention of the decadent 1970s, aka the Me Decade. Stretch transformed fit in the 1980s, allowing jeans to fit like a second skin, making denim a signifier of sex and status for the MTV generations. The high-low method of dressing emerged in these years, the shining example of which is Vogue's groundbreaking November 1988 cover featuring model Michaela Bercou in a Christian Lacroix couture jacket and guest jeans. Denim is often described as democratic, but until the 1990s, most designer denim was aimed at a niche demographic that was anything but inclusive in terms of size or race. That began to change when black-owned brands like Carl Carney, Cross Colors, and FUBU started making products that spoke to and for their own communities, at the same time that hip-hop was becoming mainstream and musicians started setting fashions. Fit and fabrication were the denim preoccupations of the 2000s, the decade in which designers explored how skinny jeans could be and how low rises could fall, with tabloid publications documenting celebrities' every outfit change. Looking at you, Brittany and Justin. Alongside big brands like Tommy Hilfiger, a spate of independent denim labels, including Apple Bottoms and Cheap Monday, popped up. Later in the decade, luxury labels doubled down on denim. Phoebe Philo, then at Chloe, gave high-waisted jeans 70s vintage vibes. Kate Moss approved. 
dad jeans were soon to follow. Boyfriend jeans fell in the middle of these extremes. Jeans are essential in a world that is growing ever more casual and focused on comfort. At the same time, denim's contribution to the climate crisis is being revealed. Designers like Diesel's Glen Martins are exploring ways to work more sustainably. Our legacy prints rather than dyes some of its jeans, and Bottega Veneta offered denim look leather dungarees. As the carousel of fashion spins ever faster, styles are constantly changing. The reintroduction of elephant jeans a la Jinkos by Celine and Vetements, for example, was quickly followed by a Y2K-inspired low-rise moment. One of the defining denim moments of the 2020s was Demna Vesalia's use of the fabric in his debut couture collection for Balenciaga. He's not the first to elevate this humble fabric to such heights. Gianni Versace and Jean-Paul Gaultier preceded him in the 80s and 90s, but back then it was shocking. Today, Jeans Couture acknowledges the central role denim has in fashion. In 130 years, jeans progressed from workwear to haute couture. We can only guess where they'll take us next as we work and play in denim.